So I've known my boy, Tom Youngs, for about six or seven months now. Now he's got 10K on YouTube, about 5K on Twitter, which is um, grossly underrated. Definitely go follow him on Twitter. But the thing is, I've spoken to Tom a whole bunch and we kind of vibe back and forth. The first time that we ended up speaking, um, sort of just connected real deeply. And I see him as a friend, the kind of um, the mate that you just kind of send really sort of dodgy, inappropriate text to, um, that kind of friend that you kind of just vibe with. So the reason I want to get Tom on is he's got a very different aspect and different take of the space he's from a different part of the world he's got different like life experiences um and i'm a bit of a degenerate but i think he's got a little bit more higher sort of thinking than myself yeah mate thanks thanks again for having me it's been it's been seven months i think since we first kind of started speaking to each other complete disclosure like i i tell people that you are like my nft mentor like you were the person that helped carve my initial direction when i was like dude like what is this where are we where are we going and you're like look think about doing this think about doing that and i have a huge amount of like gratitude to like how you helped me in that initial initial kind of phases but then throughout the last six months as well you've just been an absolute savior and like you said we we send each other way too uh, too many inappropriate things uh, but yeah other side of the world we could be we could easily be brothers living next door to each other in the same place but that's going to have to wait for another day um yeah we i have um i think i have a very different uh, different perspective to some people based on my experiences of where i've come from so i've come from mainly a tech background uh i worked in uh, worked in many different types of tech startups and mainly consumer retail tech solutions so working with like high end luxury fashion businesses um or retailers companies like selfridges in the uk harrods some of like the high, higher end luxury retailers and I worked with their web teams um, all the way through the last kind of like five, six years when there was a mass adoption, a mass movement towards mobile web consumer technology. And it was very clear to me that Web3 and especially NFTs were going to be the next kind of bastion of where this is going for consumers and brands to connect at a much, much, much deeper level. So at the moment, we, we have brands and they are completely distinct from their user base, their community. Where, what NFTs and Web3 are going to do, and this is my thesis, is that they are going to help brands connect, connect with their consumers, but allow their consumers to direct what products, what services, and what their business does. And that's the, the massive revolution that's incoming. I think we're a couple of years away from that. We've seen a big movement of all these, the biggest brands in the world. They've all dropped NFT projects, but they've only dropped those NFT projects to DGENs like us. So we are going to invest in their projects, McLaren, um, Adidas, Nike. We're going to invest in those projects if we think we can make money out of them. But those guys were just testing the waters. It was a test. Um, the way I look at it, so and I, like I said, I come from a mobile consumer retail background. And uh, when mobile phones first kind of came, come, kind of started the iPhone back in 2010, every single big business, retail, retailer or brand, they dropped an app. They were like, we need to get an app out there. We need to get an app out to our um, out to our consumers. The the technology wasn't there. Like only a small proportion of people had smartphones. The actual web, the the technology of the apps themselves were crap. So they were completely like um, unuser friendly. The UIs were shit. The UX was shit. And so all of these businesses were like, hmm, we just spent two hundred thousand, you know, a quarter of a million dollars on creating an app. It's got us nothing because seven people downloaded us, don't downloaded it. So then roll forward, uh, it was about eight years to 2019 was when uh, these all of these businesses um, were like, okay, well, the tech is here again. Mobile apps offer a much richer, deeper, deeper kind of experience. They all came back and now every single consumer business has their own app, whether it's an airline, whether it's a hotel, whether, whether it's a, you know, a retailer, a brand everyone has an app because it offers a superior experience. I believe that we're going to see the same thing with NFTs. We're going to have a bit of a cool off period over the next couple of years. And then every brand, they're going to have NFT collections. I, my, my thesis is that uh, DAOs and decentralized, organize, decentralized autonomous organizations are going to become one of the mechanisms of corporate governance that these brands use to connect with their consumers. Okay. But well that sounds um, a little bit too overwhelming for me. I was like, I didn't expect, I, I genuinely wasn't expecting such a, a deep answer in return. I, I, I was expecting like, yeah, man, it's pretty good. Um, and just like, just that kind of, <laughs> I love it. Um, I guess with that in mind, because it's like right now, when you were saying the cooling off, the way that I'm kind of feeling the space is right now is it is 
contracting and it's like coming back to its core base of people and people that are kind of in here to kind of stay. Now, one project that you kind of got me onto and I ended up flipping it, sorry, man, but it was Gents Croquet Club. I actually listed it um, like a, a, a meme price and it actually triggered. But the idea is like, I then started to see, and I'm starting to see it a little bit more and more, which is projects that aren't trying to just run up a whole bunch of art. And this is a semi plug for what I'm kind of doing because I'm starting to adapt a little bit of that. But the idea is, it's people that are kind of creating smaller, tighter groups that be it like alpha groups, be it kind of passes, be it like these little things that are a small, tight supply because people kind of then end up having a Web3 home, somewhere where they've got their bros, their home is to kind of like relate to and do that. Like that's the vibe that I've kind of gotten from you and I've kind of seen that. And I know this is going to sound like a bit of a plug for you, but it's like, it lets me kind of understand what you're doing in a sense, which is kind of how you're navigating that aspect. Because I know that you're kind of, pulling something together and you've been trying to navigate and trying to get yourself in a position to kind of exceed in that like sort of in that kind of zone in that realm yeah let me strip it back to again i'm going to go probably a little bit deep so apologies if you think i'm a complete nerd but i come from a science background as well i used to i used to be a dentist and a biomedical scientist so i come from a science background and there's a uh, there's a scientific number called dunbar's number which is uh, the number is 150 and this is this is a number that was scientifically researched in the 1990s that kind of proved that 150 was the maximum amount of deep, meaningful relationships that you could have um, with, with people. Now, think about 150, right? Like 150, how many items have uh, you been in projects where there's like 10,000 items, 20,000 items? The other side, 100,000 items you cannot maintain quality relationships with that many people. So what I've seen is I've looked at I've looked at projects like the Gents Croquet Club, uh, the Proof Collective, which is probably the best example, and uh, the 333 Club by Zeneca, which is probably the closest ex example. These were these were projects that are extremely tight. They have high quality information and information when it's in that that small kind of realm of like a couple of hundred people less than a couple of hundred people that is when alpha is actually alpha because people bring information from the things the areas of their interest they bring it into a small group and it doesn't get diluted immediately so when we've seen alpha groups with hundreds maybe thousands of people in that isn't alpha that's beta that is not quality information so a big thesis of mine is that the tighter the group the higher the info the higher the quality of information because the relationships that you can form with those people are just inevitably of a higher level, a higher degree. Now, one thing that I think about uh, a lot is, okay, well, I look at all the projects that I've been involved in and I'm like, do you know what? None of these hit what I want. This is, an, I, I want to create the ultimate group that I want to be in. And that is a tight supply where I can go in once a day, once every couple of days, and I'm not trawling through days and days of threads trying to find decent information. I want to come in where people are firing on all cylinders. They are high quality, whether they're traders, creators, founders, artists, but they're coming in and dropping high quality nuclear bombs of information. And I want to come in like a stealth attack, just pick up that information, go utilize it. Now, that is that is a thesis that I have. It's And it also comes back to, okay, well, if, if you're going to build a business, you don't start off with 10,000 employees, right? You don't start off like... We have been, if we think about how NFTs have worked to some degree, it's been like startup funding. And you don't start, you don't fund a startup and be like, yeah, by the way, you don't go to these VCs and like, yeah, I'm going to employ like 10,000 people. They would just laugh at you. They'd probably spit at you and then just like laugh at you. But I'm, the, the way I see it now is the way we have, we have, we have vehicles of corporate governance like DAOs, which is what my project, the Summit Club is going to be, how it's going to be constructed. That allows you to have a smaller community that has has a say in the direction of the project. So the Summit Club for uh, for me, that is not going to be my project. It is a community led project. And architecture like like DAOs, um, that level of corporate governance gives the opportunity for people to actually have a say in the direction of a project, which excites the fuck out of me because I, I i just want to be building cool shit with cool people i don't want to be telling people this is what where where i want, want things to go i want to be able to provide a kind of guiding light but i don't want it to just to be just to be like kind of me being like okay we go go do this i want everyone to feel like they are kind of they have a say in where things are going i guess to kind of ex um sort of leapfrog off that 
that means that you've kind of got a thought about where the space is going to kind of go and how it is. I want to kind of pull this back and go, hey, how can we give some value to someone that's just watching that may have come across you once or twice? Maybe they just stumbled across the video, whatever it is. What is the advice or kind of the direction or something that you think someone should kind of sort of take right now? They're like, they're in the space, then they might not be in some of these groups, some of these things that don't really know what they're doing. They're kind of just like floating around. What do you think the opportunities are for them in this kind of market and climate like right now today? This is when we talk about building, um, let, let's strip that back and actually define what that means. So building has like multiple definitions to it. Uh, it can be it can be someone who's a founder. It could be an artist. It can be a marketer. It could be a designer. It could be any of those things. Anyone can build. What I what I always kind of pull back to is just fundamental knowledge, fundamental understanding of what blockchain is. I think it's so easy for us. And we've we've seen this. I think a lot of people came in. You, uh, you call them tourists. I call them speculators. I think that both that the um, people who are there to utilize the system to make money, I think that's a, a really important thing. But what it's been left with, the space is now left with guys like us and the people who are in our communities and other communities who are here for the long term. But it comes back down to okay, well, actually, how much of a how knowledgeable are you on the fundamentals of everything that we're talking about? So how much do you understand about Ethereum, the scaling issues with Ethereum, the concerns around that, the, the challenger brands like Solana, like where are they actually stacking up? Because I look at that kind of stuff and I'm like, there's a huge amount of opportunity just when it comes to the basics. When brands, the biggest brands in the world start utilizing this, they are going to be looking for experts. And at the moment in NFTs, we are the closest thing there are to experts and there are people that say like we can't call ourselves experts, but the fact is, is that we are just because we're ahead of the game. So my question to to anyone who is doing who is kind of playing in the space at the moment, maybe feeling a little bit lost, understand the fundamentals, go back and really learn the fundamentals of where this is going, because it will it will open up and unlock some perspectives that you may not be thinking about, like where this is going. So I look at it. So I know that I know that Nate is outside of the game is into real estate. Think about where could NFTs be, be like how could that help real estate or where could that be sitting in real estate in a few years time it's fucking obvious to me like you look at lease rate lease agreements you look at uh, mortgages anything like that if that's your game if that's a bit of an interest you you have an opportunity to get well ahead of the game if perhaps you're you're you know you are in in the real estate game um uh, the same with hospitality you think about tickets for events like festivals concerts um there are so many use cases it's all about the niching down and the fragmentation of where NFTs are going. And you need to pick your niche because you will be ahead of everyone else if you pick that niche now and you become the expert in that niche. So it's it's now it's all about uh, depth rather, rather than breadth. Understand the technology, but understand how your skill sets fit with where the technology is going for the areas that you're interested in or your kind of areas of expertise. I keep thinking that there's going to be like some little quirky snap or some quip or something to kind of like rip up with, but it's all like super well thought out information that like people want to hear. And it's just like, it, yeah, no, I love it. And it's good, but I'm just like, I'm just waiting for like the, the, the D gen kind of text message, <laughs> sending me a meme, that kind of, thing. I'm just waiting for one of those to slip in my car. It's coming. The zing is coming, but it, ne <laughs> it never came. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, like I, I think, no, it's, I think it's that... dude, the, 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 the truth is, is that I'm, I'm obsessed with this game. I'm obsessed with business. I'm obsessed with leadership. These are the, this is what I'm, I'm here to do. The last few months I've been able to connect with people that I was, I would, uh, Nate jokes about this. We kind of dropped this back to DJ and stuff, but I posted this on Twitter. I was like, yeah, everyone that I looked up to in like January, I'm now working with. And he jokes because that's because I'm just short, but that is true. Technically, I am looking up to a lot of people when I'm I'm now working very closely with uh, NFT Zerk, um, the other NFT YouTuber in the UK. And uh, this is an aside. We we now are working with Web2 brands, pulling them into Web3. So this all fits together into what we're doing. We are just playing the game. We're continuing to play the game. And this is if you kind of go and do a little bit of diligence, and this is what I recommend with anyone, so the projects that myself and uh, Nate, are, Nate are doing, go just read our white papers, our pitch decks, our websites, go and actually learn, because this is an opportunity for you to dig into potentially some of the most rewarding types of communities that there that I believe exist. Um, so, so think about this as an opportunity. If you missed out on Proof Collective, if you missed out on the 333 Club, 
I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna throw it out there. Like I I I know myself and Nate have huge ambitions for where things are going. So yeah, don't like just don't sleep on it. Like actually go and do some diligence. Um, but but yeah, th this is an extremely fun time. We're all working together so so closely at the moment. And if you stick around to the people who are building at this point, you there's net you just get network effect. And I know this because I know that I'm hooking up people within my community and feeding them into other well-connected people. And I know that they they appreciate that. And it's the, the same same thing with you. It's just a filter down effect. Awesome. Um, I'm I'm kind of I'm 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 pumped. I'm excited. I like you've kind of given me a little bit of, and this is not just saying it for the video or some shit. Um, you've given me some kind of thinking to kind of do, which is you then kind of niche down and take what you know and understand how does web three engage and interact with that which then means that you can then like find that niche within the niche of web three which i think is smart and it's good because that look i i wanted to make a video about this but it's like the next billionaire the next billion dollar corporation is here right now you could speak to the next mark zuckerberg the next elon musk right now you can dm them on twitter they've got 50 or 60 000 followers like twitter followers you could find them right now and you could be their sort of right hand man their second in charge but you're just not looking at it and doing it and i 100 percent think that that's going to be a thing the, the, the way to simplify this a little bit is like the opportunities over the next five to ten years are going to come from uh there are kind of few two main th areas that i look at there's technology so are you a technologist are you a developer an engineer can you do that kind of stuff because if you if you can you can start thinking about solutions where web three, web two uh businesses and uh so web two businesses there is an opportunity for blockchain technology to revolutionize those i ain't a technologist i don't have that background i don't have engineering skills what i do have is a service background so i've worked servicing clients and so my play is that i know that there will be brands and uh, uh people that will require services so i'm positioning myself from a services perspective so that's a, that's one those are the, the if, if if you're looking at this and being like okay well where how could i start to think about which niche to go down um think about it from there think about it are you do you like the actual building side the actual technical side or do you potentially like the services side which is client based that kind of thing and then you can kind of go off into your into the different directions but yeah i pull it back to think about the technology because once you think a little bit about and you need to take take a step away from from this think about the technology think about where all of the use cases of what an nft is it is a transaction it is a signature where is there a use case and then think about how you can fit yourself into that use case and set yourself up for the rest of your life Awesome. Thanks very much for coming on and having a chat, Tom. I hope hopefully everyone got some value. I'm going to leave Tom's uh, links below. So go uh, follow on Twitter, sub on YouTube. Um, and yeah, any last words, Tom? No, guys, just uh, it, I, it always comes back down to this. Just have fun. Like just have fun, meet people, make new friends. Um, and we are, we are all in this together. Um, you're going to make it if you just link yourself to some sick people. Awesome. Thanks very much for coming on, Tom. Um, everyone, if you found value in this video, please consider hitting up that subscribe button. Tom's also. Um, also, while you're down there, goes also go hit up that like button um, and drop a comment below on um, the dopeness of Tom's moustache. One to six. Um, I will pick one of those comments and that will be going into a whitelist giveaway that is for an undisclosed project, but if you know, you kind of know. As always, it's been a pleasure having you with me. I look forward to seeing you in the next one.